Welcome to FPC, the first 175 years. Thanks for celebrating with us as we remember 175 years of ministry and mission and look forward to 175 more. From 1834 until 1961, we Presbyterians worshipped on the corner of Main Street and Federal Street. Here are some views from today and yesterday. Here's the intersection of Main and Arch Streets looking north. This is from Main and Federal looking south. Here's a view from atop the courthouse looking at the intersection of Main and Center Streets. We had a Morton's Theater. And a newspaper named The Hustler. In 1889, the Brick Meeting House was torn down to make room for the new Main Street Presbyterian Church building. In 1961, we moved to a new building on McLaughlin Avenue.
1972, we added a gymnasium, kitchen, and classrooms. In 1992, we built a 500-seat sanctuary and added more classrooms. Since 1889, we've had 27 pastors who have served at least a year. These last four have served since 1967. When the Spirit tries to move you, heed the call. And when the devil tries to confuse you, you gotta be. We've been blessed with good facilities and great pastors, but the strength of our church has always been its people. We'd like for you to meet five of them. The reason that we're here this morning is to uh, participate in the celebration of the 175th birthday of the church here, and uh, we have selected a handful of people to join us and uh, offer some remarks, some remembrances, and uh, share some of their feelings about the times they have spent with the church. We have uh, selected seasoned <laughs> members of the church because uh, their remembrances and their uh, uh, history with the church is, is longer than some of the, the younger folks and uh, can give us some insight to the church. would like to ask you some questions. Go right ahead. The first one is, when and how did you become a member of the First Presbyterian Church? I was born into the First Presbyterian Church, baptized in 1947, joined the church when I was eight years old and have been a member for almost 63 years. And for those that watch this, please tell us your name. Oh, my name is Mary Bell Cole. I am the daughter of Mary Evelyn and C.R. Cole, who were also longtime members of the church. Great. What are some of your fondest memories of the church? I've been thinking about that, and I think basically it was a lot of them were in the old church, particularly with Mr. Norman Spence, <clears throat> who was a superintendent of Sunday schools, and he would let very good children ring the bell between Sunday school and church. Obviously, I did not get to ring the bell very often. Uh, the, the people who mentored me, I have real good, because they are the ones who brought me into my faith. People such as Juanita Wilkie, uh, Kurt Reed, Gil Hoffman, who were all Sunday school teachers of mine. And they really made my faith real to me. And then moving into this church and being here as a teenager was just a wonderful experience. And then coming back and becoming an adult, so to speak, 
in this church. And I have participated, I've been a Sunday school teacher, I've been on the Board of Deacons in a session, have worked with women of the church, so I have lots and lots of fond memories. Oh, great. Did you ever think that this congregation would be around for 175 years? Well, when I thought about it, that was not something I dwelled on, if we were going to be here 175 years. But I think it is so important because so many mainline churches are just falling apart. And to have been part of one church that's been together for 175 years is just astounding in this day and age. What would you like for our congregation to be remembered for? I would like for us to be remembered as a church with open doors who welcomed anybody of any faith anytime they wanted to come. And that basically we do have an open door policy. And we're strong in our faith and I think we project that to the rest of the community. And lastly, what are your prayers for the future of our congregation? I would pray that we keep growing. We, we need more and more young people. In order to grow the congregation, you need a youthful congregation. And that's the area where we seem to fall down, is in our young people. Now, Rob Wilson has revitalized that, and we seem to be doing better. But there were times when children just abounded in this church, and that doesn't seem to be happening. So that would be my prayer, is that we get more young people. Maribel, thank you for your uh, participation. Thank you for your years of service. Uh, thank you for your uh, singular personality mm -hmm. and uh, what you've added to the church over the years. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Doris, when and how did you become a member of the First Presbyterian Church? It was in April of 1952 that uh, Ross and I along with uh, Ross Jr., who was four years old, and Michael, a little over one year. I had Michael in my arms, Ross in this hand. Ross Sr. had the other hand, and we came down the aisle of that church with little Ross Jr. singing, I don't want to be advertised. <laughs> I don't want to be advertised. advertised. Well, we were, because Chet McClure happened to be uh, the minister at that time, and uh, we uh, broadcast the service. And this was the Sunday that it went out on all the airwaves that my son did not want to be advertised in the Main Street Presbyterian Church. So that's how you entered the fold, right? That's, that's how we got there. Okay. What, if, what are some of your fondest memories of the church? Oh, I guess it was, to me, the church is people. And I guess a lot of it has to do with uh, people that I have learned to uh, know and love and revere and uh, laugh at, laugh with. Um, there have been some characters in our church, oh, and really? I'm not going to call any names, but uh, they're wonderful, wonderful people that I have met and have, have become my friends. And so many of them are already gone here. You know, I'm, I've been a member here 50, uh, since 52. And um, um, I have become Mama D to everybody in this congregation because that's what I taught my grandchildren to call me. I didn't want to be a grandmother, <laughs> so I'm Mama D. Okay. Did you ever think that the congregation would be around for 175 yes, years? Yes, I did. I had no doubt because there are too many saints that I have known in this church for it not to perpetuate itself. Yes, I'm not a bishop. What would you like for our congregation to be remembered for? For their spirituality, for their informality, for their acceptance, for their joy in, in worship, for all the things that we need to be thankful for. And sometimes we forget. And sometimes we think it's a chore, it's old, first of all, and first of all. But a lot of it is our attitude. And we come with the idea of worshiping God. Thank you. What are your prayers for the future of our congregation? That we will just keep on keeping on. Doris, I want to thank you for spending time this morning. 
We appreciate your service and your time, and we just love the things that you do for us. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jerry. It's a joy. We have with us now two long-term members of the church. In fact, uh, Judge Spain family has been in the church for quite some time, preceding him. And we wanted to talk to them this morning because they have a rich and colorful history in the church and would like to ask them just a few questions as a part of this 175th celebration. I'll ask you first, Judge. Sure. When and how did you become a member of the First Presbyterian Church? Well, I, uh, I was born in 1928. As far as I know, <laughs> as a little fella, I was taken to that church. And I remember growing up as a little schoolboy and going to that church. And my mother sang in the choir. Uh, my mother and father were married in Tennessee. Their marriage broke up. And we came back to Kentucky, where my mother was from. My father's folks stayed in Tennessee. But we came back uh, to Kentucky and immediately uh, continued to be members of the First Presbyterian Church, where uh, my mother had been a member and uh, her mother and father both had been members. And I remember my grandmother and grandfather my, on my mother's side. And they were sweet people who lived in Madison all their lives. And uh, both of them lived for a lot of years after I knew them. And so that's how I got, I got started with the First Presbyterian Church on North Main Street. The judge is the uh, more famous of the two, but uh, his wife has been uh, a backbone for him for all of his life and uh, has a history in her own right. Uh, Mrs. Spain, more affectionately known as Frankie, would you care to tell us how you became involved with the church? I joined the Maxwell Street Presbyterian Church in Lexington in 1941. Now, I'm not going to give you any other points where you use your fingers, but <laughs> I was a member of that church, and then when Tom and I married in that church, and we came back to Madisonville to live, obviously I would become a member of the First Presbyterian Church here. Frankie, let's uh, continue with you. What are some of your fondest memories of the church here? Well, I have to go back to the time when our children grew up here and we were more actively involved in the church than we're able to now. But uh, I think the days that the boys were baptized are sweet memories for us. And the older boy is still a member of the Presbyterian Church and the younger boy has joined the Lutheran Church with his wife. Judge, your fondest memories? Well, <clears throat> as a little kindergarten fellow, I remember starting in the church here because uh, my mother and dad's divorce uh, called us to come back to Kentucky. Though we were living in Tennessee at the time, they, they uh, divorced. And uh, my father's side of the family stayed in Tennessee and my mother's side, including me, came back to Kentucky. But what's the other question? Fond memories. Right. I do have uh, fond memories as a little fellow of going to class and uh, meeting other young Presbyterians from Madison. It's been a good church uh, as long as I've known it. It's been all of my 80-something years. And uh, uh, I've seen a lot of preachers come and go to that church and liked them all. Let me ask you this. Did you ever think that this congregation would be around for 175 years? I really never thought about it. Uh, 
I, I don't think that the young person that you, you sit around and give thoughts to the far futures of the clubs and uh, organizations to which you might be going. I don't think you do. Now that I've gotten older, I'm much more aware. Yeah. Frankie, did you think it would be around for 175 years? No, I agree with Tom. You just don't think about the future. It's it's here and now, as far as we're concerned, and we'll do our part to keep it here and now. Good. Frankie, what would you like for our congregation to be remembered for? Well, I think certainly the, the three-day spiritual walks that we instigated a number of years ago. At that time, it was the walk to Emmaus, and now it's the great banquet. And I think that that is certainly one thing. It's a Christian outreach uh, for our congregation. Judge, what would you like our church to be remembered for? For uh, making new members feel that they belong and giving them a feeling that they're with a group of friends instead of somebody that's trying to judge them. And I think this church has done that. Frankie, what are your prayers for the future of our congregation? Well, that God would continue to bless this congregation and as the years go on, that we could continue to be a force in the community, whatever that force may be, and hopefully for something good. I would also like to add about my memories. Uh, I think Tom and I both have sung in the choir. We've been Sunday school teachers. At one point, when our boys were young, we had a junior church that that uh, was was fun. And to this day, our boys remember hymns sung by Tennessee Arnie Ford in that service. Really? We had a recorder, mm -hmm. but uh, we've both served on the session, and I've been active in the PETA Presbyterian Women. And I'm tired. Well, you must mention the library too. Oh. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. One day when Tom was on the Supreme Court and I went to Frankfurt with him every day, I asked Denise Spence, who was the secretary at that time, if she had anything I could do in a hotel room in Frankfurt to help the church. And she let out a great sigh and said, yes. And she handed me the church library. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm careful what I ask for. <laughs> And you've been faithful with that for quite some time. Yes. Uh, I've kept your books. <laughs> oh, no. Judge, how about prayers for the future for our church? Uh, I think we need to make them. And then to, and then to be active in enforcing them both because uh, I think people not as aware of how important their church life is anymore. And a lot of people uh, shrug it off nowadays that didn't used to. And I think that's uh, scary. And we need to more participation from the members of the congregation than, than we're getting. And I'm not sure how we need to operate so that we can be practiced uh, commercially as far as developing the, the church. But I think this is a wonderful church and I continue to be a part of it. Well, I want to thank you too for spending this time with us. I also want to thank you for your membership, for your contribution, for your dedication to the church. You, I know you are an example for me and for a lot of people. Thank you so much for being with us. It was our joy. Thank you. Thank you. We have with us this afternoon, Kendrick Nuttall.
who has been a longtime member of the church, held a number of leadership positions in the church, and has always been a uh, interesting person. <laughs> and as part of our celebration of the 175th birthday, I'd like to ask you some questions. The first one being, when and how did you become a member of the First Presbyterian Church? Well, you want the long version or the short version? Uh, whatever makes you <laughs> whatever feel comfortable. Makes me feel comfortable. <laughs> I actually joined this church, <clears throat> excuse me, in 1964. So that means I've been a member for 45 years. Uh, <clears throat> I was uh, baptized and professed my faith in the Presbyterian Church in Shelbyville, Kentucky, when I was about 12, I think. So I have been a Presbyterian for my, most of my life. Mm -hmm. um, when my husband was brought up in the Christian Church, or Disciples of Christ, and when we married, we lived in Illinois for four years. And like a lot of young couples, we didn't attend church. So we didn't have a question about which church to attend, but then we had a child and you say, you know, when I was brought up, going to church and Sunday school wasn't an option. I mean, we were in that car and we went every Sunday. So I thought, okay, now we're going to have to start this child in Sunday school and church. So about that time, we moved to Madisonville, and uh, we had the options of the Presbyterian Church, which was the Main Street Presbyterian Church at that time when we moved it, or the Christian Church. Both of the churches were downtown. They're both gone now. But we ended up attending the First Christian Church. And I was very happy in that church. There were, there were and still are a lot of good people. We made good friends there. My husband was active in that church and in various roles. And uh, But I guess I just was always a Presbyterian. <laughs> Something ingrained in me. And uh, he was gone a lot on weekends, and so I was kind of on my own with the children often. And about that time, <clears throat> they, uh, Robert Owens came to this church as pastor. And although I didn't know Bob, uh, his family, in fact, I think they lived almost next door to my husband's family in Eminence, Kentucky. And uh, so, he knew him, and uh, my mother knew his mother, and I just became kind of curious. I thought, well, I want to go up in here uh, and meet somebody that there's kind of a connection with. Him. And uh, so I started coming back to the Presbyterian Church. And then I did, I never actually joined the Christian Church, so my membership was transferred from the Shelbyville Church to this one. And, um, wasn't too many years later that my husband joined me here, and uh, so we made a Presbyterian out of him, too. <laughs> so, and that's, that's, how how it, that's how it happened. Let me ask you this. What are some of your fondest memories of the church? Well, I think some of my fondest memories involve maybe things family and personal. I saw all four of my children were, uh, well, they had been, all four of my children were baptized in the Presbyterian Church in Shelbyville. Hmm. We took them back there for baptism, so they were baptized as infants, but at about the age of 12, uh, they all went to uh, communicants class here in the church, and we, they all made their professions of faith here in the church. Um, Two of my daughters were married here in the, what is now the chapel, and those were happy days. Um, five of my seven grandchildren were baptized as infants in the old sanctuary. So those were all happy times. Um, 
lots of joy in that. I think a big joy about the Presbyterian Church is its connectionalism. And I have met a lot of wonderful people through from other churches through being a member of this church. But I do think too, I look back on when I first came and I joined a circle because my mother had always been in a circle. I knew what circles were and what the Presbyterian women's work was. And I've always felt felt real strongly about the work of the Presbyterian women and the women in the church. And I met some wonderful people that I call them the saints that were here before me. That uh, <clears throat> one of the first ones I remember was Julia Ramsey. And uh, that was just special to meet her. And in looking through the history of the church, I believe that she might have been the first uh, female ordained elder in this church in 1952. And then Jeanette Simons, and I think my first Sunday school class was in the little room that's now the treasurer's office, and Evelyn James taught the class, and uh, when I think about people that have gone, uh, Mary Evelyn Cole, and uh, Grace Anderson, and then, of course, Norma, who was kind of my mentor. You know, she kind of pushed me into a lot of places I didn't really want to go. But, but you know, when Norma said go, you went. And then uh, working, I remember Mary Evelyn Nichols and I had uh, good times teaching a second grade Sunday school class for several years. And then kind of a, it's more of a bittersweet time, but I think about when my husband died unexpectedly the support and the love and it, that the church showed to me and to the children. People brought food and message of comfort that I didn't really know real well in the church, but it really, I think that we are a caring church. And that brought a great deal of, I guess, joy and healing to, to me at that time. So. Let me ask you this, having been the clerk of the session, <laughs> Uh, was there one or two, are there one or two memories that you have that uh, stick out in your mind as either uh, humorous things or significant things, or was it pretty much routine? Well, there was a lot of routine about it, but I think it was, it was neat working with other people and uh, you develop a working relationship. I think sometimes unexpected things happen. I remember um, sometimes there were things that I didn't really think I was going to be for and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, God's in this room. <laughs> You're going to do this. And uh, uh, I think it was very difficult too in the period of time there that we were without a pastor and that was a uh, difficult frustrating time as clerk because I had maybe more responsibility than I had 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 before and yet I look back on it now and think there again it was kind of a special time to well uh, sometimes you learn that you can do things you don't think you can do <laughs> Did you ever think that this congregation would be around for 175 years? Yes. <laughs> I do. You know, I think I was, particularly in looking back in the history, uh, you realize that there was a group of people here in Kentucky that felt called to establish a church here, and they felt that, and they were encouraged and they were able to do it. And uh, we've had good times and bad times and you look at the uh, history thing and there were times when membership was up and then four or five years later it would be way down. And you know, we've had wonderful sharing times and then we've had uh, times of real dissension and uh, painful times too. 
bitter times. But you know, it's always weathered it so far. And I just believe that, you know, Presbyterians are pretty <laughs> sturdy people. <laughs> and uh, I, I feel like as long as God has a purpose for us here in Madisonville, and we fulfill his purpose, we'll be here for, who knows, another 175. Great. What would you like for our congregation to be remembered for? Well, I would like for us to be remembered as being a congregation that cares for each other and is strong in its worship and care, but also involved in the community here and spread out in reaching out to other people. There are a lot of people that um, hurt, have needs, and we can reach out to them if we don't get too focused on ourselves sometimes. But uh, I think we have, the church has changed and its mission has probably changed in Rome. I think that our uh, walk to Emmaus and great banquets that are held in this church are, have been a tremendous influence right here in this local in, uh, community in Western Kentucky. And, uh, I want us to keep on building on that type of program of being part of not just here in this building, but part of our whole community. Okay. And lastly, <laughs> what are your prayers for the future of our congregation? Well, in our, <coughs> our women's circle, for this year is going to, is studying the book of Joshua. And I've been looking at it and doing some study and getting ready for us to start our meetings again. And this summer, the theme for the Presbyterian Women's National Gathering was from Joshua, of course, they tie it all together. And it says, God will do great wonders among you. But then before Joshua tells them that, he says you've got to go sanctify yourself, which means you've got to get to work and be prepared for these great wonders. And in thinking about Joshua, it made me remember when we dedicated the new sanctuary in 92, that many of us signed off on another passage from Joshua. And that as for me and my people, we will serve the Lord. And a number of us are still here, and I hope we're still doing that. And I guess that that's what I hope, that we will keep this commitment. And I think Lon's sermon this morning really uh, nailed it on the head when it said faithful worship and community. And I think that if we have our faithful worship here and depend on God's will, not ours, and uh, reach out and serve and serve him. I, that's, I think we'll be here. And I think my prayer is that uh, we'll remember our past and honor our past and remember those people in this church who've gone before us and paved the way for us. But that we won't be bound for our, by our past. We won't say, oh, well, this is the way we've always done it. That we will be open to new ways in the future. And that we will take advantage of each day in the meantime. And that's my prayer. Kendra Cotton, thank you for this time, for uh, your dedication to the church uh, and your life as a witness to Christ. And uh, thank you for uh, your friendship with me, and I know from experience all the people here at the church. Thank you. Well, thank you. It's been it's been a joy. I've been talking about the toys. It's been a joy to be part of this church family, and I think we do have a lot of love and a lot of caring, and I feel privileged to be part of it. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Now sit back and see if you recognize any of these Presbyterians. O oh Lord my 
God When I in awesome wonder Consider all The worlds thy hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout The universe displayed Then sings my soul My Savior God to Thee How great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. When Christ shall come With shout of acclamation And take me home What joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow In humble Adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, How great thou art! Great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee.
want to thank those who have gone before us and paved the way, and who now dine at the greatest banquet of all. Here are only a few of the many. When the mountain touches the valley, all the clouds are taught to fly. As our souls will leave this land most peacefully Though our minds be filled with questions In our hearts we'll understand When the river meets the sea Like a flower that has blossomed in the dry and barren sand, we are born and born again most gracefully. Thus the winds of time will take us with a sure. 